Hey everyone, my name is Brian Morris and thanks for stopping by my channel. Today we're going to look into how you can create an integration with Notion and then query some data from a database uh, using the Notion API. So uh, let's hop right to it. Okay, so you can see here I have the landing page for the Notion developers uh, portal uh, pulled up. The URL you want to go to is developers.notion.com. Uh, before you get started with this tutorial, make sure you actually have a Notion account and you're signed in with it because you're going to need it to follow along. Uh, so in the upper right hand corner, you can see there's a button here that says My Integrations. This is the first step we need to do. We need to create an integration and register it on Notion side. So let's go ahead and click on that. Um, and then if you've never done this before, you won't have any integrations listed here, but we're going to go ahead and click on New Integration. And let's just uh, name this my first integration. You can see there is the option to upload a logo. We're not gonna do that today. Um, it's, it's pretty, it just makes it look pretty. Uh, we need to associate it with a workspace though. So I'm gonna select streaming too, because that's usually the workspace that I've been using lately to play around with things. Um, and then there's different uh, security capabilities you can add in here. So we want our integration to be able to read content, update content, and insert content, we're gonna access those in a later video. Uh, and then I'm also going to leave the default of read user information and include an email address. Uh, so let's go ahead and click submit. And that's pretty much it. You've created your first integration, but we need to grab this internal integration token. And this is what we can use to start testing our integration. Uh, the, our current integration is not going to be available to everyone who uses Notion. It's just for us and anyone who has this specific token. Uh, so let's go ahead and click show and copy this. And you want to keep this a secret. You never want to leave this public. I'm obviously going to delete it once we're done with the video. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and paste that off to the side here so I can reference it later. OK. Um, alrighty, so now that we have this created, uh, let's go into Notion and actually create a database. So inside of Notion, I have pulled up here, it's just a blank page, nothing's been done here so far. Uh, so if I delete this out, it gets me a couple of options here. I'm just going to click on this database item here, which is going to create, uh, it's going to turn the page into a database, a uh, table version specifically. And let's just say like my first database. And let's create a couple of records in the database. We'll say uh, record one. And let's say my first uh, page and hello world. Why not, right? Hello world is common anytime you're doing anything with development. So let's go ahead and throw a hello world there. Uh, and this is pretty much all we need to add to the records. Now, in order before we can actually access the data uh, through the Notion API, we need to share the page or database we want to access with our API specifically. So we're going to go ahead and click on share up here. And instead of typing anything here, we can click invite. And then you're going to see your integrations that have access to this specific workspace listed in this dialogue here. So let's go ahead and click on my first integration and then click invite again. Uh, and that's pretty much it. We are done here. So let's hop over to VS Code and uh, start writing, uh, writing some code to access it. OK, so we're in VS Code now. You can see I have a, a fairly empty project built up with one file called tests.http. Now, we're just going to use this to be able to uh, send requests to the Notion API. It's using a plugin for VS Code called the VS Code REST Client plugin. Uh, I actually made a video about that a while ago on how you can use this. Uh, check the one of the corners for a link to that, but uh, it's good stuff. Uh, so what we can do here is we can actually start typing um, some very basic uh, HTTP commands that's going to let us execute a, a request to the Notion API. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is I want to query some information about the database itself. So let's type in git and then we'll type in HTTPS colon slash slash api.notion.com. You can see it's already <laughs> pre-populated some stuff for me. Dot com slash v1 slash databases, uh, v1 slash databases. And then I'm going to put a slash here. We're going to stop here for a sec. Let's go on to a new line and just get the rest of our rest of this all settled. And we'll type in authorization, which is uh, the header we're going to type our token in. Bearer is what you want to start that off with. And now I'm going to copy in the secret that we or the token that we had pulled from the previous step and paste that afterwards. You want to make sure there's a space between bearer and that token. And the last required header is actually notion hyphen version, uh, which is how they version their API using the headers. So the current version at the time of this recording is 2021 uh, slash 08 slash 16. Uh, uh, it's likely is when that API version was released. And now we need to get the ID of the database before we can actually execute this request. So I'm actually going to hop back over to Notion. And a little trick you can uh, use to get the ID of a database. If you have it open in a web browser, you can just look at the URL. But if not, you can uh, uh, select these little three dots here and copy a link to the view. And then we're going to add a couple lines in VS Code and paste this in. Now you'll see this, uh, this, this is our URL. Let's actually clear this out so we got some more room to work here. Uh, you can see here's the URL for Notion, and then we have this random gibberish uh, string of characters and, and numbers. This is actually the database ID. Now, you want to be careful not to grab the one that's after the V because that's the view ID, so it's not the same thing. So I'm going to copy this and paste this uh, into the URL up here. We can get rid of this. We don't really need it anymore. 
Uh, let's save the file and I'm gonna go ahead and click send request. And you can see we got a 200 okay, which is which is good. It's exactly what we're looking for. Uh, if I scroll down a little bit, you can see there is uh, the object type of database. Uh, here's the title. It's my first database, just as we specified. Uh, and there's a bunch of other attributes here that you can you can look through, like the different properties that are available to the specific database. Uh, but mind you, this doesn't actually include any of the records for the database. There's actually a different HTTP call you have to you have to use for that. So I'm going to add three hash marks here just to give myself a, a new request here. And we're going to copy and paste this below because most of it is actually the same. So the endpoint you want to hit is we want to leave the URL can say the same. We want to put forward slash query at the end of it, which is what you can use to query databases. Uh, and we have to change the request type from a get to a post because uh, you can spat, you can optionally pass in filters to filter out the data that you're requesting back, but it's not necessary for this tutorial. We can leave it just as is. We'll click send request again. We got another 200 and let's widen this up a little bit. Let's scroll down. And we can see here uh, our results come back as an array. Let's minimize all these objects here. So here's three objects that came back inside of our results, um, our results object. And this is an object type of page. Uh, if we scroll down, we can look. Here's our properties. Same same things that we saw in the in the metadata about the database. But this is the page itself. Uh, we can see type title is really the one we're interested in here because this is where we put all of our our different. Uh, our different content that the, the records, the items that we put into the database. So you can see we have hello world here. Uh, looking at the next one, you could see we have my first page and last one would probably be record one if I remember properly. Uh, yep, record one. Um, so there you have it. So you go. There's exactly how you would get started writing some kind of integration with uh, with Notion. Uh, so just to recap, we create an integration uh, and then we went over to VS Code using the REST client plugin, uh, wrote a couple of tests to get some database, to get some information from a database. And um, yeah, you're off running. So if you like this kind of content, uh, please do me a favor, like uh, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me directly, the best way to do so is on Twitter. Uh, my handle is at Brian MM Dev and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.